What's up creators, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're returning to the Edag series and in particular to the analog styles. We're gonna to try to replicate the Kodak Ultramax 400 in digital photography. Now this negative film was suggested by a couple of you guys by Juan Carlos and Juan Antonio in the comment section on a previous video. So again, if you have any video that you want me to make or style that you want me to break down, put down in the comment section and I'll check them out. So you know how this works. First of all, we're gonna jump into some examples and break down what we have to do in the color grading department. And then we're gonna apply that knowledge to jump into Lightroom, edit a photo and create a preset out of it. So let's get to it. So creators, the Ultramax 400, uh, some people describe it as a bit of a less refined version of the Portra 400 or Ford Portra 800. The grain is a bit bigger, the latitude isn't as wide, and it's just a cheaper alternative version, but it reproduces very decent colors, so it's very popular. Now, in terms of the dynamic range, as we call it right now, or the latitude, the highlights are very well preserved, as in most Kodak films, we have loads of information in the skies, in the bright parts of the image. In the shadows, we do have a bit more information, but in particular, the blacks are very deep and very punchy and contrasty. So the darkest points on our image are always gonna retain that punchy look, very contrasty and very sharp. And that we're gonna do it in the basic corrections in combination with the tone curve. Now, in terms of color grading, we can see a very natural color palette in the Ultramax 400, but it is more towards the desaturated side. So we're not gonna see any vibrant colors, like for example, in the Kodak Ektar. In this case, all the colors are a bit muted. So this makes the Ultramax 400 useful for a wide variety of scenarios, whether it be portrait photography, whether it be landscape photography, street photography, all of these can be used with the Ultramax 400. And we're gonna have very natural results because, well, everything's a bit more muted. Now, one thing that comes with the desaturation is that we're not gonna have very vibrant skies unless we screw on a polarizing filter. So right here we can see how the blues in the sky are mostly a bit desaturated and they're tending towards the warmer tones. Now, everything in the image is tending towards the warmer tones, very typical of Kodak. We can see that warm tone in the shadows, in the mid-tones, in the highlights, any part of the image that you can see that is white, you can see that has this creamy tone added. So we have to keep that in mind we're gonna add that in the color grading department. Now, as you know, just like in digital photography, analog photography has loads of factors that come into play to achieving the final result. So it could be the lens, which is rendering the colors in a different manner, the film stock, the lighting conditions, it could be the development process or the post editing process. All these factors come into play to the final results that we're looking at on the screen. But one thing that occurs a lot with analog photography is that there's slight tone shifts or contrast shifts when you're overexposing your image exposing correctly or underexposing. Now, the Ultramax 400, when you're underexposing the image just a bit, it becomes very punchy and very contrasty. As you can see right here, the blacks and the shadows are losing a bit of information and they're becoming very strong in our image. Now, another thing that happens when you underexpose this film stock is that the greens and the reds take a bit more relevance and a bit more saturation. Notice how the greens are very vibrant, more towards the emeralds, and also the reds when you underexpose or uh, in a more contrasty situation. The final aspect that we need to talk about is the grain, because the grain isn't as refined, as I mentioned, as the Kodak Portra, but it is there, it's not too distracting, but it is there, it's a bit rough, a bit in the grudgy side, and we just have to keep that in mind to apply it when we reach the effects tab in Latin. So creators, today we're gonna to create two different presets. One which is a bit more of a natural style, and then another one more contrasty with those tone ships or a bit more saturated greens and reds. So let's jump into Lightroom and start color grading. But before that, as always, I have to remind you that these two presets that we're gonna create today are gonna to be added into the Edit Light preset pack V3 and the Analog preset pack. Link up here to my shop in case you wanna check them out. In the Analog preset pack, you're gonna find all the analog styles that we've replicated throughout the years. And as I continue to analyze and replicate more, more will be added into that pack. So that's a great way you can skip all my tutorials and in the process you can support me so I can continue to do videos for you guys in the future. So if you can support me by buying anything from my shop, I'll be very thankful. If not, don't worry guys, let's jump into Lightroom. Okay, creators, once in Lightroom Classic, I've selected an image and don't worry if you guys are maybe in the mobile version or desktop version, today we're gonna use the exact same tools that you can use in those apps, only the interface is a bit different. So first of all, let's start off with the exposure and contrast using the basic corrections and the tone curve, and then we're gonna move down into the colors. So what we want to do in this first preset, which is gonna be the more natural one, is first of all, bring back a bit of information in the highlights, 
and then information in the shadows without losing the strength of the blacks. So let's start off with the highlights. Here I'm just going to not pull them up otherwise we'll introduce more brightness and therefore more contrast. We'll lose some detail in the bright parts of our image. We're going to go towards the negatives but not towards the minus 100 otherwise this is completely unnatural. Let's go around the minus 20. It's just going to be enough. Then shadows, again, we don't want to go towards the negatives, otherwise we introduce more contrast and we're losing a lot of detail in the dark parts of the image. We want to go towards the positives, so we have more information in these parts as well. Again, not too high, maybe around the plus 20 is going to be enough. Then the whites will control the brightest spots on our image. Meanwhile, highlights are a bit further down in the exposure. So whites and blacks control the whitest points and the darkest points uh, respectively. So I'm just going to pull the whites up just a little bit around the 10% just to make sure we have those whites in our image present. And then the blacks, we don't want to go towards the positives. Otherwise, we reduce all the contrast and our image is very flat. So let's go towards the negatives just to retain that punchy look that we have in the Ultra Max 400. Something around the minus 38 is going to be enough. Now, right now, our image is looking very punchy, but don't worry, we still have to go to the presence tab and also to the tone curve. Next, let's move down to the tone curve. Now, the tone curve is this tool that allows us to control the exposure and contrast on our image. We can even use it to color grade with the RGB channels over here. But for this tutorial, we're just gonna pose ourselves in the point tone curve over here, not the parametric, which is at the left. And here, we're just gonna stylize a bit of our edit. Now, the tone curve can do exactly what we did in the basic corrections over here, only that the interface is a bit different. This line is just a representation of our image, and we can basically darken certain areas, like the dark parts over here, or we can brighten them up. And then we control the bright parts on our image, making them brighter or darker and create any point in the middle. So it's a bit more flexible than the basic corrections, but we can basically do the same thing. The way that I like to use it is as a second layer of the exposure and contrast, so we can add maybe a stylizing effect over here. And that's exactly what we're going to do right here. Again, this is a very complex tool. If you want an in-depth tutorial about it, link up here to the respective video. Right here, what I'm just going to do is just stylize a bit of the blacks, because if we zoom in, we can notice that there's no difference between the blacks on our image and the interface of Lightroom. So let me just pull up the blacks just a bit. This point will control the darkest points on our image. In other words, the blacks. I'm just going to raise it up, not too much, otherwise our blacks lose all the intensity that we added in the basic corrections. Just drag it ever so slightly, around a 10% in the output or the vertical setting, and you can see that it's very slightly a bit faded out. And we're also brightening up a bit of the shadows with this movement. Next up, let's move up to the Presence tab. Now, the Presence tab is composed by Texture, which, as the name says, adds more digital texture or reduces it towards the negatives. Clarity adds more contrast into the midtones or reduces it as well. And the haze, well, what the name says, it removes haze from uh, elements in the background. So as you can see, if I go towards the positives, the mountains in the background of the islands are a bit more clear. Towards the negatives, it introduces more simulated haze. Now, the thing is that these tools also affect the contrast and the exposure on our image. So first of all, let's reduce a bit of the texture and the clarity just to soften up this digital image, which is very sharp. As you can see, it's very sharp, even though we were moving. So let's reduce a bit of the sharpness in the texture around the minus 15. And then going to do the same with the clarity towards the negatives. So we reduce a bit of the contrast in the midtones. And then we're going to introduce some negative dehaze just to simulate a bit of the halation of, of film cameras. Not too much. You guys can go play around and maybe introduce a minus 40s. In this case, I'm going to be very conservative around the minus 15. It's just going to be enough. And now we finish with our exposure and contrast. With Y on our keyboard, we can see the before and afters. And you can pay attention to the sky in particular. And you can notice how we reduce the highlights in the basic corrections. And therefore, our, our sky has a lot more color and a lot more information. Then in the shadows as well, we have more detail while returning the contrasty blacks that we wanted. Now, let's move down into color grading. Now, as we mentioned in the example images, the Ultramax 400 has a slightly desaturated palette. So we're just going to use the general slider over here of saturation. And again, we don't want to go towards the positives. We want to reduce the saturation on all colors in a very even manner. So I'm just going to go slightly towards the negatives, around the minus 13%. And we can take a quick look at what we've done. And this is just the difference. It's a slight desaturation on all of the tones. Look, there's the difference in the yellows and the blues. I'm happy with these results. Next, we're going to scroll down. And for the time being, we're going to skip color mixer. First of all, let's go into color grading. And color grading is a tool that allows us to add a tint into the shadows, into the midtones, into the highlights. Or in this case, if we go all the way to the right button over here, which is the global color wheel, to the entirety of the image, which is exactly what we're going to do. Just add that warm Kodak cast into the entirety of the image. So right here, I'm just going to play around. First of all, move the point in the center towards the border. 
to add more saturation so we can see which color we're working with and choose the correct one. I'm going to go with something in these lines towards the oranges and obviously the saturation is way too much. I'm just going to drag it towards the negatives. You guys can play around with how much saturation and the tone that you use. I'm just going to go with maybe the 43 in the hue and saturation around 18%. You guys, again, play around. So as you can see, if I deactivate color grain, this is before and after and just add this light creamy tint into the entirety of the image, including the sky and the shadows and all the parts of our photo. Okay, so our next step is using color mixer to alter specific colors, but in particular, we want to alter the greens. And in this image, we don't have any greens. So let's copy the settings, go into another image that has greens and try to finish it over there. So right click to copy settings, copy settings in the settings menu. And then we're going to copy all the settings that we actually used. And in this case, I'm going to go to this photo of my friend Patricio before he went face first into the ground. So I'm just going to right click settings and paste the settings. So this is our progress until now. We can see that the saturation on all the colors, we can see more information in the highlights and in the shadows whilst returning that contrast black. Obviously, you can see right here the difference how in the original image we have loads of loss of information over here. Over here, we can appreciate a bit more detail. So we're doing a quite a good job. Now with the color mixer, let's refine our colors. First of all, let's go into hue. And in the hue, we're just gonna change up a bit of the colors. First of all, the reds. We don't have too many reds over here, but we can see the reds over here in the wheel. So the reds, we don't want them towards the brick-like colors over here, towards the oranges. We want them a bit more towards the magenta slightly. Gonna go around the minus 18. Then the greens and the yellows are gonna control all the vegetation on our images. And we don't want to take them towards the warmer tones. Otherwise it looks like and they were very dry or, and they're dying. We want to go towards the emerald tone. So towards the positives, I'm gonna go quite high around the 30% for both of them. And immediately you can notice the difference how our greens have changed a bit more towards the emerald tones and they're looking quite nice. Next in saturation, we're just gonna desaturate a bit of the sky. Remember that the skies in the example images were always a bit tuned down, uh, giving way to that warm tone that we added in the color grain department. So blues and aquas will control mostly all of the skies. Aquas will control a bit of the water as well. So just go towards the negatives around the minus 10 is just gonna be enough. And you can notice the difference how our sky is very bright and very saturated on our left image. On the right, it's more controlled and a bit more towards the warmer tone that we added in the color grain over here. Okay, so our base preset is almost complete. One thing that is missing is the grain. So let's zoom in. It's always a good practice to zoom in into your images when you're applying grain to work properly. And in the effects tab, we're gonna add some grain. So I'm just gonna add some quantity over here and then add some size. Maybe around the 70 is gonna be enough. And then, yeah, the, qu the quantity, I'm just gonna pull up around 30%. So right there, we have a very nice grain. I'm just gonna re leave the roughness as it is. Roughness introduces more contrast within the little particle. So towards the negatives, it reduces it. Towards the positives, it adds more contrast, more roughness. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's noticeable if you zoom out, but it's not distracting or anything. Now, if you zoom in, you can see it, that it's very present. Now, one thing that I have to keep in mind with the grain is that it's not conscious depending on the resolution of your image. So this amount of grain, this size will maybe look different if you apply it into an image which is of a lower resolution and maybe it will look even smaller if you apply it to a bigger image. So, I'll, so you always have to keep that in mind with the grain that you maybe have to adjust it if you're switching from camera to camera or from images from different resolutions. Okay, creator, so now our base preset is complete. Now, before we jump into creating the variant a bit more punchy and contrasty, let's apply it into different scenarios to see if it did a good job. It's always a good practice to test out your preset in different images because it may be the case that it looks great in this image, but in other cases, it looks horrible. So let's save the preset first. Let's go into the left panel over here, into presets, and right here, you're gonna select the plus sign, create preset, and here you can name it. And remember, you don't want to mark anything that you didn't use. So for example, white balance, exposure and contrast, I like to omit them for the preset because these are the values that I'm going to use to compensate anything that was shot poorly on field. So maybe the white balancing is off. I will use the basic corrections of white balance. Maybe the contrast was off. I use the contrast and exposure tools over here. So I'm not going to mark them. I'm not going to use lens corrections either. Grain, make sure it's marked on all the others that we actually used. Okay, so let's see it in this image in Seville. We have a very bright, sunny day with lots of greens, lots of blues and also the reds that we want to work with so let's apply the ultramax as you can see it's already in the air like preset pack v3 and there we have it it's a bit more of a desaturated palette uh, not too much but it is present it's a bit more of a softer look 
the sky is more desaturated, uh, brought down, we have lots of information in the highlights. The shadows also have a nice information whilst returning that contrast. The screens are a bit more towards the emeralds. I think we did quite a good job over here. How about in this image of my mom in the garden? Again, let's apply the preset. And there we have the before and after right here. It's looking very filmic because of, of all of the greens. You can see how they're shifted more towards um, the Kodak colors uh, that we normally see on the greens. Reds are shifted a bit more towards the magentas and the sky is a bit more uh, lower. But this preset will work perfectly for portraits as well because it doesn't change the skin tones drastically or anything like that. How about over here in a bright sunny day? Let's apply the preset once again. And this is the Ektar, which is very saturated. This isn't the one. Ultramax over here, here we have it. And you can see the difference in the sky. And in particular, notice the white building, the broad museum over here, how it's very creamy because of the saturation we added over here in the color grading department. Then we have those emerald greens, as you can see. The difference, it's quite nice. We have that grain, which is present, but not too distracting. And we have loads more information in the highlights, but also in the shadows. I think we did quite a good job. Okay, now let's create a variant which is a bit more punchy, more contrasty, and with a bit more saturation in the greens and also in the reds. But don't worry, we don't have to start from scratch. Let's use one of our images right here that already has the preset applied, and we're gonna modify it from there. So first of all, to add more contrast, we can use the basic corrections or the tone curve. For example, we want to add more contrast, we can pull up the whites in the tone curve and the blacks move it towards the bottom, and they will have a very contrasty image. But in this case, we're losing the softness that we added into the blacks over here. So what I'm gonna do is just make the whites and the blacks more different to each other, just elongating our exposure to make it a bit more contrasting. So whites, I'm just gonna pull it more towards the positives around the 38 and notice how our brightest points on our image are a bit more overexposed. And then the blacks, I'm just gonna drag it ever so slightly darker towards the minus 46 and you have deeper blacks and brighter whites. The difference to the original image, our image is a lot brighter, a bit more punchy. Next, I'm gonna go down to HSL and just alter some of the saturation that we added over here. The reds, I'm just gonna add more saturation that we saw in the underexposed images shot with this uh, film. And then the greens as well, acquire a lot more saturation. Just put it up on the 25s. I'm gonna do the same with the yellows. I mean, you can notice how our image is a bit more punchy and those specific tones, the reds, are a bit more saturated and also the greens over here. They're more towards the cooler tones but a lot more bright and saturated. So again, let's save this preset as another variant, a more contrasty variant, and see how it performs in other images. For example, I have this image that I really like, but we have this horrible vignetting uh, because I was shooting with an ND filter screwed on and that isn't a good practice. But anyway, I like this image. Let's apply the presets. Let's see the Kodak Ultramax first of all, and it looks fantastic. Now, just as a reminder that you can play around with these values, these are tentative values, but you can also play around with the amount slider over here. You can add more intensity, into the values that you added for more of a dramatic look, or you can go ahead and reduce it if the effect is too strong for you guys. So this is the original value over here of the Ultramax, and then the Ultramax Contrasty. This is just, just, adds, just adds a bit more contrast into the image, making it a bit more dramatic. One thing that I would play around maybe is with the Dehaze tool over here. If you add more Dehaze, Notice how more simulated halation starts to appear and our image starts to fade out just a bit. It, it looks quite nice when you add it in a moderate manner into your bright post on your image. So the Ultramax 400 in particular is designed to be used in all types of situations. Let's test it out in a bit more of a dark situation, more contrasty and with less light. So let's apply first of all uh, the base one called like Ultramax and it looks quite nice. Immediately you can notice how we have more information in the dark points on our image. This is before. Notice uh, all the ceiling over here, and then we apply it. I have more detail, that warm cast, and that very nice grain. Nothing too crazy, this is a very subtle preset. And then the contrasty version just adds more punch into the entire image. I think we did quite a good job. The skin tones are okay. They're nothing crazy, nothing completely desaturated or anything like that. They work quite nice. How about in this image? It's a bit underexposed, so let's first of all correct a bit of the exposure over here. And let's apply, first of all, the Ultramax. That looks quite nice, quite warm. Maybe I would reduce a bit of the contrast over here. But again, it's looking very nice with those warm tones, that nice film grain, and those desaturated tones. And finally, the contrasty version just adds a bit more punch into the image. So there you have it, guys. That's how I would achieve the Kodak Ultramax 400 colors in digital photography. 
I know it was quite of a subtle preset in this time uh, compared to previous examples, but again, you can always play around with the amount slider. I'm quite happy with the final results. Now, just a reminder that this preset, these two that we created are in the Edelite preset pack V3 and the analog preset pack, link up here to my shop. If you can purchase anything from there with my personal presets, personal LUTs that I use every single day to edit my videos and photos, I'll be very thankful. If not, don't worry, just like the video and share it. That actually helps me out quite a bit. I'm Tony Fuentes, cheers to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.